opening the, the closing session with the first uh, talk um, from the EMA about the clinical trial information system for platforms trials. And it's uh, Noemi Mano he will, who will give us this talk. She is a pharmacist specialized in quality control, has a long track record in different functions in the pharmaceutical industry, primarily in clinical research and development. She uh, is, uh, since 2011, a principal scientific administrator in the compliance and inspection sector at the EMA, and as a member of the Clinical Studies and Manufacturing Task Force, she is involved in the implementation of the clinical trial regulation. And she is, as well, the business leader of the implementation of the EU portal and database. Noemi, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So I am delighted to be able to present to you the, um, the clinical trial information system in the context of uh, platform trials. In this presentation, what, uh, what I'll aim to do is just to introduce the system and see how we can actually use uh, the system uh, for platform trial and how it's actually supporting us. So as we know, um, CTIS is, as, is delivering the requirement of the regulation is to harmonize the submission, the assessment and the supervision. And in the context of um, platform trials, we need to think that we will have to, to deal with large scale trials. And obviously this system uh, is not just to supplement the VHP, it's certainly to revolutionize the way we work. And as it was said early on, we will be able to submit one single application to 27 member states. Uh, this is really speeding up the way we can actually deliver a clinical trial. Um, we need to think that also this, uh, this way of, uh, of operating the system will enable the sharing of the information between all the experts from member states, also within your organization. And if you've uh, identified who is working on that trial, uh, you have all the expertise that can log in and prepare the information in advance. Um, knowing that this system obviously is uh, to be a robust system, secure, facilitating this uh, uh, information sharing, etc., it is certainly supporting innovation and research in, in Europe. Um, what we are saying also, what, uh, what we need to also mention is that this uh, information being made available to all is certainly enabling the collaboration across borders. Um, we've seen it within the uh, COVID uh, crisis. Huh? We were all uh, very interested to understand what information was there, what trials was going on, uh, when would we get this vaccine. Um, the race for the vaccine was so, so important that information sharing is obviously the key and the way to deliver uh, research from now on. So, um, so on, the, on this slide, what we see here is the representation of the clinical trial system uh, being articulated with um, workspaces, so two secure workspaces and a public website at the bottom. You can see those with the orange boxes there. So those, those uh, two workspaces, the one dedicated to the sponsor is obviously secure and for restricted users with uh, we have their own rules and permissions and then on the authority it's obviously the same mechanism of access um, the sponsor will prepare their um, dossier and this is obviously uh, supported in the same way for industry and academia there's also a protocol for the marketing authorization applicants and the on authority workspaces the national competent authority, the ethics committees, users, the European Commission and the European Medicines Agency will also be able to log in in a secure fashion to, uh, for our member states to assess the information uh, provided by the sponsors. And once the decision is made for the information to be made public on the right hand side. Obviously, the information, most of the information is made public. There are some exceptions. You can actually refer at the back of my presentation. There is a information on what is not to be made public. 
Next slide, please. Yes, thank you. So in this uh, in this slide, just to give a little bit of support on what one can see in as a sponsor in the clinical trial information system. Obviously, we have different tabs. Uh, we're not going to spend very much time here. Well, I think what needs to be probably understood, and this is for platform trials that it would be for any other trials, is that sponsor now working in CTIS will need to be better prepared. They will need to think of how they wish to organize themselves in terms of the user administration of their users. They will need to think of how those trials, and this is the very first time, have to be prepared. And I think that's something that we've heard today um, in terms of the preparation of the work. I think this is what we're going to, to un understand as a challenge from the clinical trial information system. Sponsors will need to think and organize themselves well before they actually prepare and submit information to the member states. Next slide, please. So here I've got few, few screenshots from the system, uh, very much to give a flavor of how the trial uh, initiation uh, can be done. Uh, the sponsor will need to prepare what we call a clinical trial application dossier. This is the initial application. This initial application is articulated with a part one and a part two. The part one is common to all member states and this is where this uh, uh, amazing um, uh, harmonization can can occur because all the member states will actually will assess this uh, section jointly and will provide one assessment and then obviously we have the part two so in the context of platform trials i think we've heard it today um, there are different challenges but in terms of the system itself the sponsor will have to obviously fill in this application dossier. So they will need to think well before whether this is one trial or whether this is there will be a master trial and other protocols that will come along, along the way. Um, if there were to be uh, that option chosen, I need, we need to think that the sponsor will be able to refer to other trials, obviously within their documentation, but also within the structured data that they will provide to the member states, which obviously will speed up the, the, the way and the assessment time that member states will take to assess the information. Because obviously, if they've been made aware of another trial on which they've, that they've already assessed, this information will be easy, easy there to access and obviously will support and help the assessment of this new, new trial. So next slide, please. I'm just highlighting here on this slide where this information can be actually populated in terms of associating clinical trials. And the next slide, please. And here what we're seeing is uh, the product section of the part one, where obviously this information will be provided, will need to be provided by the sponsor. And I will move to the next slide, please. And in this section, we see the part two that needs to be specific to all, to each member state. And this is where obviously information about the consent form will appear, uh, the suitability of the site, etc. So obviously this will be assessed uh, by, by each member state and a um, uh, decision uh, at the end of the assessment will be provided by that member state for uh, the part one and the part two. And that will be a single decision in the member state uh, for that trial. So. We, what we won't see here, obviously, anymore once the clinical trial uh, system is launched, is that we will only see one decision instead of the ethics opinion and the national competence authority decision that we have today, uh, according to the directive. So next slide, please. So this is my last slide to certainly to say thank you very much for listening to this, uh, to this introduction to CTIS, but also to refer you back to the training uh, program that we have at the agency uh, in order to understand better all those different functionalities of the uh, of CTIS. Um, and also to, to just as a closing remark to my presentation to say that CTIS obviously as, we, as we've seen is a standardized way of presenting the clinical trial, uh, trial application dossier that is catered for any type of trial. So it needs to also fit uh, platform trials. We, we have some challenges. I think that's what I've heard today. Uh, but what we need to think about the system is that it is very robust, secure, 
and will certainly enable a faster, quicker um, assessment by our member states in order to provide a decision that uh, will be issued per member states, but after a, uh, certainly a joint uh, decision by all of them. Um, it's also important to mention that the system is, uh, is there to support you, but we need to understand that for all of us, even if we're not doing platform trial, we will need to be better prepared on how to complete this clinical trial application dossier. So this is why the training program is certainly there to support you on this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Noemi, for this uh, great presentation. And uh, as a Swiss person, I'm um, looking forward to see how this works for our neighbors. <laughs> There's one question in the chat. It's uh, if a sp quite specific one. If a sponsor wants to suspend the evaluation of his dossier, is, it, is this possible in the CTIS? Absolutely, it is possible. So during the assessment of the clinical trial application, so from the day it is submitted up to the time it is, um, it, it is uh, decided upon, uh, the sponsor has the ability to actually withdraw the application. And that uh, withdrawal can occur at any time during this period of time. So it can happen at validation time, during the part one assessment, and, at, uh, and before decision, certainly. Thank you. So there's actually no other uh, question around and I think I would like to thank you again. And if you agree, then I hand over to Jacques and we are looking forward to uh, this great system working in Europe. Thank you very much. <laughs>